With 300 men, God brought freedom from evil and oppression. This was the army of Gideon. Today we face a difficult battle. The spirit of fear has gripped the hearts of men. It is time for the army of the Lord to rise up and retake the land. Welcome to Victory in the Valley. Every day we are releasing the weapon of prayer. By faith, families are being set free. Bodies are being healed. And joy is restored. Walking in the promises of God, we expect miracles to happen. Jesus is our King. God is our Father. And the Holy Holy Spirit is with us. This is Victory in the Valley with Kevin Ortiz. Word of God, Amen. Well, this 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 uh, this man, uh, he came and he had this question. It was an awesome question, and I thank him for asking it. And uh, I want to to share it with you. Um, because we flow in the Spirit of God, and you hear us moving in the Spirit of God, you hear us praying in the Spirit. Uh, he had this question. The question was, I, I wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but I haven't received it yet. And I kind of feel like maybe God has rejected me because I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And there's a lot of people that feel like, well, if I can't be praying in the spirit like Pastor Kevin or like that person that's sitting next to me, maybe God has rejected me. And I want, I want to get, give some clarity to that, but the, the short answer is no, God has not rejected you. Amen. Amen. And don't allow the devil to put that lie in your mind. Amen. But I want to, I want to take you through the word of God. Uh, on Acts chapter 8, um, chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He had risen from the dead. He was getting ready to, to rise to heaven. And he was speaking to his disciples because, of course, you know, that's Jesus. We don't want to lose him again. But Jesus says, I got to go. But I'm sending you another, the comforter, the counselor, the Holy Ghost. And he told these disciples, when that Holy Spirit comes upon you, then you're going to become a witness, not just here in the city, but in the, in the, in the nation and then across the world. You're going to become a witness of me after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. So... These men, they waited in the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they became transformed. Before they had run, run away from the, telling people about Jesus, they denied being with Jesus. But now because the Holy Spirit's upon them, they went to the streets and they told everybody about the love of Jesus Christ. They were changed. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, when we get saved, when we commit our hearts to the Lord and we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, when we heard the gospel and we finally surrendered unto the Lord and we said, Jesus, I need you in my life, we open up the doors to our heart and the Holy Spirit comes in us. At salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in you. You receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Father, the same Spirit that's in your heavenly Father now comes and makes his home inside your heart. And that Spirit cries out to God, Abba, Father. That's why when you walk away from the altar or from that moment that you gave your life to Jesus, there's something working on the inside. You feel different. Things are happening because the Father's Spirit has come inside of you. You didn't choose God. God chose you. He came to you. And he sent the Spirit to come live inside of you. So at salvation, you have the Holy Spirit inside of us how many of you are, are are saved let me see your hands praise god i want to tell you the holy spirit's in you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you praise the lord hallelujah go like this i have the holy spirit inside me say that i have the holy spirit inside of me 
Praise the God. Praise God. And it's the spirit of the family. You can't say you're part of the family if you don't got the spirit. Amen. That's how you know you got saved. That's your receipt. You know, when you walk out of Walmart and you got that bag and, and the, those things beep. How I many y'all know what I'm talking about? When you're walking out and you walk through the, that, that, that area to leave and they got the, the, the protection thing and you walk through it and it goes beep, 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 beep. And then they got that real, real mean person standing right in the front there looking at you. You look like a thief. What are you trying to steal? And what do you do? You grab your bag, you open up the bag, you pull out the receipt, and you show her or him the receipt, and you say, no, 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 I bought what, what I'm walking out with. I, I purchased this. Here is my receipt. See, the Holy Spirit is your receipt. That you've been bought with a price, that you're a child of God, that you're saved and born again, and you're on your way to heaven. Amen. You've been accepted in the family. Nobody can steal your salvation. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, once I'm saved, I'm saved. Amen. See, you're on your way to heaven. Amen. You're on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. You have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Spirit of God is the one that's going to take you there. Amen. He's pulling you to heaven. Ah, the Father. Crying out to the Spirit wants to return to the Father. Amen. And guess who he has to take with him? Me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Say, I'm saved. By grace, By grace, through faith, it's because of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the Holy Spirit in you is what, what happens when you get saved. Now, the Holy Spirit comes on you when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes on you like a coat. Someone said, when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's like you were walking down the street and a big old 18 wheeler truck came and ran over you. You get up, people will look at you and they say, There's something different about you. You don't look the same. You had an encounter. <laughs> when you get baptized of the Holy Ghost, you will change completely. Everything about you. Someone says, well, when you get baptized in water, you go down and you come up. When you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's like you're standing underneath Niagara Falls. Something's changed. You look different. You talk different. You act different. Something is going on in your life. It's because the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you can be a witness that's why the holy spirit comes upon you that's why you get baptized in the holy ghost so that you can tell everybody about who jesus is you might have when you got saved and you had the holy spirit in you you might have told people about jesus but it's when you get baptized with the holy ghost that's when you actually show people who jesus is I don't have to tell people about Jesus. I show them who Jesus is. Someone who's sick, I come to them and I say, let's pray. And Jesus, the one I serve, the God that I live for, the one who saved my life, is going to heal your body. And I begin to pray for them and the power of God comes upon them. The power that was on me comes upon them and their body gets healed. That sickness and disease leaves their body. Now they've had an encounter with Jesus. They begin to believe. I believe you're, you're, that Jesus is real. He healed my body. So they go around telling everybody, look what Jesus has done for me. These men, Peter and John, got filled with the Holy Ghost. They said, okay, let's go to church. They're walking to church. There was a, a, a person who was lame and crippled on the, sitting by the, the gate, begging. Peter and John went out to them, carrying the Holy Ghost upon them. Looked at that, that man, said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. 
rise up and walk. And the Bible says that that man's body began to get strength. His legs began to, to get healed. He jumped up on his feet. And the Bible says that he went walking, leaping, and praising God. Not because words came to him, but because the power of the Holy Ghost showed up in his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was the Holy Spirit upon him. It changes you. You become a witness. You can't help but to tell people about Jesus. All you want to do is tell people about Jesus. You wake up in the morning thinking, oh, praise God, what is the Holy Spirit going to do in my life today? You go on this adventure, literally looking for people to go, to go up to them and share the love of Jesus with them. Amen. I was telling my friend, I said, when you get saved, it's like you're on a bicycle riding to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm riding my bike. He, me by myself, I'm riding my bike. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, it's like you, do, you become the, the driver of a bus and you say, all aboard, we're on our way to heaven. We're, or you begin to take people with you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. See, Peter before being filled with the Holy Ghost, being, before being baptized with the Holy Ghost, before the Holy Spirit coming upon him, he denied Jesus three times. They said, weren't you with him? A little girl, a little girl. I thought I saw you with Jesus. He said, that wasn't me. Shh, don't tell anybody. Shh. Three times he denied Jesus. But after he got filled with the Holy Ghost, the power came upon him he didn't stay home and just say oh I thank God for this wonderful feeling I'm just going to worship God in my house he didn't say oh turn let's go and change the CD and put on some more worship music so we could just feel this feeling upon ourselves Holy Ghost ain't a feeling it's power upon you amen, amen. to be a witness he got filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what he did? He went out to the streets. The same people that crucified Jesus. Peter showed up to them and began to preach that the one that they killed was actually the Son of God. And this man who denied Jesus three times in one service led 3,000 people to the Lord. 3,000 people got born again that day. Amen. What am I telling you? When you get the Holy Spirit upon you, your weakness is turned to strength. God blessed Peter with a thousand souls for every, every failure that he had with Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, when you got the Holy Spirit, you, you, you're not trusting in your power anymore. You're trusting in his power. Amen. You're walking, by, you're walking in that anointing. You're walking in that glory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to Luke chapter 4. Say, I need the Holy Spirit. Come on, say it. I need the Holy Spirit upon me. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Here Jesus is speaking to us. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. When you receive the Holy Spirit upon you, you get anointed for ministry. It's no longer about trying to get your prayers answered for your personal needs. It's about chasing after those that are lost and bringing them into the kingdom of God. He gives you anointing. He gives you power. That now your prayers begin to remove burdens and pains off of people's lives. So many people are hurting. It's just they don't know who Jesus is. So many people are lost and confused, wondering, why am I even in existence? because they don't know who Jesus is. Our prayer should be, Holy Spirit, anoint me. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Holy Spirit, be with me. Holy Spirit, use me. 
Jesus, for 30 years of his life, he walked living as a normal man. Jesus. But at 30 years, he got filled and baptized with water. The Holy Spirit came upon him, and he stepped into his call, which is to be the Savior of the world. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need the Holy Spirit? Amen. That's why Jesus said this, the signs that I do, greater will you do. Because the works that Jesus did were not the works of his strength. The works that Jesus did was the works of the Holy Spirit that were upon him. Jesus had only one strength that only he could do that the Holy Spirit couldn't do. And that strength was to lay down his life and die but because he laid down his life we are saved today amen. amen praise the lord praise the lord my friends this is what i want to share with you today the holy spirit wants to come upon you it's not about praying in the spirit praying the spirit is just a sign it's not it's 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 evidence that you're filled with the holy ghost but the true evidence is how your life is impacting others, being used by God, letting the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. The call, the burden for the loss, it engulfs your spirit. Everything about you wants to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. And just like salvation, where God called you, it's the Holy Spirit that brings you in. It starts with the desire that's inside of you. By faith, you heard the word of God, you believed the word of God, you responded to the word of God, you believed in Jesus, you got saved. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. You believe that the Holy Spirit has been sent by Jesus Christ to come upon you. And then you just have to open up the door of your heart and say, Holy Spirit, I want you. I invite you to come and change my life. And I open up the doors and I, I, I need you. When I got to that point in my life, I was in a hotel room in Florida. And I said, I cannot live another day without the Holy Spirit upon me. Before I lived just according to my own feelings and my own emotions, I tried to live for God the best way I could. There were times that we'd have great times with the Lord, other times where God was not even in my thoughts. But when I got hungry for the Holy Ghost and I wanted the power of the Holy Spirit upon me, and I cried out to God that day, the Lord began to help me. He began to lead me into his presence. And in that hotel room in Florida, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I woke up a different man. When I left that hotel room, I was changed. It wasn't about trying just to figure out what box I fit in, how I can just go with the flow. It was about leading people to Jesus. I looked at everyone as whether if they knew Jesus or not, they needed to know, and I was going to be the one to tell them. Amen. You might be there today. You've been, might, you might have been crying out for the Holy Ghost and wanting the infilling. You might want it to be baptized where the Holy Spirit is being upon you. You might want the evidence of speaking in tongues. That is your walk with the Lord. That is your faith with God. Today you can do it if, the Holy, if you allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you. This is your moment. This is your time. But there is a prerequisite. Do you know Jesus? Are you born again? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Now, I want to invite everybody to just go and stand up on your feet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes for a moment. My friends, this gospel is meant for you. Some of you came into this church really looking for Jesus. You're tired of living a life that has no joy or peace. But you came to church today because you're looking for a Savior. You're looking for Jesus. And you wanted to meet him today. I'm a witness. He lives. And I believe the word of God says, Jesus says in Revelations, that he stands at the door of our heart and he's knocking. He says if anyone will open up the door, he will, him and the Father will come in. 
I believe right now there are people that God is speaking to where Jesus is not just knocking, but he's pounding on that door and he's saying, will you let me in? If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today you want, to be, you want your sins to be forgiven. You want Jesus to change your life. You want to meet Jesus and have your sins forgiven. With all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you want to give your life to the Lord, when I count to the three, I want you to lift up your right hand nice and high so only I can see it. Or maybe you have given your life to the Lord, but you've fallen away. The world has pulled you in the wrong direction. And today you want to rededicate your life to God. When I count to three, I want you to lift up your right hand and rededicate your life to the Lord. I'm going to lead you in prayer. This is your time. If you want to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life, on the count of three, lift up your hand. One, two, three. Wherever you're at, lift it up, lift it up. Praise God. God bless you. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. All over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can put your hands down. Now we're going to say a prayer together with the whole church. But this prayer, you're not telling me. It's your personal conversation with God himself. And as you say this prayer, you're going to dedicate your life to the Lord and you are going to open up your heart. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father is going to come and live on the inside of you. I want the whole church to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Change me. I believe in you. And I thank you for your salvation. Father, I'm coming home. Use me for your glory. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Go and put your hands together. Now keep your eyes closed and lift up your hands high to heaven. I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to people today. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to come upon you today. You've seen the life of God just flowing in this church. And you're ready to let all the Holy Ghost to use you. Even if you just gave your life to Jesus right now, the Holy Spirit could come upon you and use you. He wants to baptize you. He wants to fill your life. He wants to give you his power so that you could tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands high to heaven. Get ready to receive as we pray. Get ready to receive the Holy Ghost upon your life as we speak as we pray and ask him to baptize you. Some of you, many of you will begin to pray in a new tongue. That is just one of the evidences of the Holy Spirit. But when you leave this place, you're going to be wanting to tell people about who Jesus is and his love. You're going to see more evidences everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you promised that you will send another. You had to go, but you sent another to be with us. You sent your Holy Spirit to be with us. And your people are desiring you, Holy Ghost. We desire to be empowered, to be a witness to the world about the love of Jesus Christ. So Holy Spirit, we open up the doors of our heart. We ask you to come upon us and release the glory of God so that we can be used. Jesus, I ask you to baptize your people 
with your Holy Ghost. Come upon them right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Baptize us, Holy Spirit. She did it. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Just reach out to him today. Just reach out to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit as the spirit of God leads you. Just begin to pray in the spirit as the spirit of God leads you. Just begin to pray. Hallelujah, said the Catanamarana Masset, the Roboto, Ronda Cotanamose, the Merebebe, Canamara Masse, Reda Masset, the Roboto, Rocoromo Sodo, Roron, the Rebeke, Reke de Mene Messera, the Masset, the Moso, Soro Ron, the Kenemeren, the Messida Macana Masset, the Robo, Ronda Ron, the Nan Masset, the Kedemesete, Sere Kidabaran, the Bosot, the Bosot, the Boron, the Boro, Ronda Ron, the Marama said, Release your prayers right now. Release your prayers right now. Sarabakana moron de bosotorobo. Lift them up to the Lord. Shedebe kedebe kino masataraba. Rekede baramara masete de boron de bo. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on. Shoroboron de kedebe rekini masana maran de bo koto de bosotoro. Rona konororon de kedebe sida rakana. Rekede be kede baran de bosotoro bosotoro bo. Rona kede baran de masete de be kede be kede ba. Kana mana 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 ne beke ri 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 kara ba rondo rondo me si na mara ma se ne beke ri kara ba kana mo so kara mo so kara ma sa na ma se ne ki na ma sa na ma se ne beke ri mo so Jesus 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 Come on, keep on praying, keep on praying. Things are breaking off your life as you pray in the spirit. Things are happening upon your life in Jesus' name. Keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying. You're going another level with the Holy Ghost. You're going another level in your walk with God. Just keep on praying. Lift up your voice unto the Lord. Lift up your voice unto the Lord. Hallelujah! Sere kere masata, sere basi kere barane kere boto kere bosse kere si kere masata kere bosso. Jesus, 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 Jesus. So kere bosso kere bosso. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sere masere barane masse kere bo. Rondo kono moson de mar. That's the water. That's the that's the well. That's the living water beginning to flow. It's beginning to flow. It's beginning to flow. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Don't stay on the outside. Keep on. You are invited to our next church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come to Faith Pleases God. Hear an inspiring word. Experience the presence of God. And claim your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to Faith Pleases God. I know Jesus will change your life. You can also watch us live online at faithpleasesgod.com. Faith Pleases God Church. All are welcome.